their record prediction, man. I mean, you get it pulled up there. <laughs> Boy, this you know, I'll start it off. This I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna go through this kind of slow because this Colorado game before the um we've we've talked about Colorado at length and mm-hmm. what we both think about Dion and and the program and this is probably what game day I'm assuming is going to be at this one. I would actually assume so. I think I, unless there's another yeah. um, high, high marquee game going on that weekend, but like Colorado it, it, at the end of the day, I, after the spring game, what I saw from Colorado, which looked like a glorified fucking uh, um, seven on seven game, as you said, Christian, which I a hundred percent agree with TCU's winning that one. We got Nicholas, we got Houston SMU. I'm not saying those teams can't put up points, but uh, TCU is the better team there out of those. So I say, I see a four and West Virginia. I, I don't know a ton about them to be honest with you guys, but like, I'm not really worried about that. I think TCU just, it, just with their dominance, Iowa state is kind of interesting. It's at Iowa state. It's not an easy place to play. I know this is a Nebraska fan. Trust me, even though they've sucked um, back in the day in the nineties, they're a much better improved team. Brock Purdy ain't throwing the ball around there though anymore either. BYU. There, there's some teams in here where I'm just like, man, I don't know. TCU, because I can't judge them just because of what they've lost. K-State, Texas Tech, like Daniel said, there they are. Texas, Baylor. I think Baylor might be in that mix. I think they might surprise some teams in the Big 12 this year. And then we got Oklahoma, who, Christian, I know you are very high on. I think, I believe, Christian, you uh, put your money where your mouth was and said earlier that, and you might, and you have every right to change your prediction for the Big 12 title. I believe you said Oklahoma was your team. This gets a little hairy. And overall, what I'm saying here, I'm not going to exactly predict which team, you know, when loss goes for TCU. But I see an eight and four, a seven and five. God, I hate to say seven and five. I'm going to go probably eight and four. Um, I don't know exactly which teams. I just know that bottom four or five games there, especially when you're when in conference games, we all know how those play out. They know each other very well. They're usually close games. I could also see him, you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not just, I, I don't know, man. I'm going to go eight and four here. This one, this, I looked at this earlier and I'm like, eight and four. I'm leaving it at that, Christian. I really don't know what else to say. You're going to tell me 10 and two or 11 and one. Damn it. I, uh, I actually did have them put down at 10 and two. And, Jeez. okay. Wow. You know, I had him, I had him there at 10 and two, you know, with losses to Texas and then splitting the Baylor Oklahoma game, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna go nine and three. Um, not because you said eight and four, but just as I'm looking back through it and kind of doing a, a little more, uh, you know, just taking a look at it. You know, Daniel has a good point here. He says they're gonna run the table until that K State stretch, right? And and I think they yeah, might have that. a. Little, you know, I think they can certainly do that. But I mean, again, you look at. Iowa State, like you said, that's not going to be an easy one for them. Uh, BYU, no. you know, they they they're not easy. Kansas they're, State, they're, you know, yeah, they they played them great last year. Right. Uh, I mean, I mean, they're playing a lot of these tough games away from home. So, I mean, uh, to me, I think nine and three would be very generous um, for that. I mean, that might be, uh, you know, that might be good enough to get them into the the, the Big Twelve championship, okay. depending on. How okay, the rest of it question. shakes out. Mm-hmm. They did this last year. They ran the table through the regular season, lost in the Big 12 title game. Mm-hmm. Is it possible with this schedule? Could could it happen again? I would say so, but it's going to be very, very tough. Um, I mean, again, they, they would need a lot of stuff to kind of bounce for them, and they would just – I mean, you never know because, again, like we said, they're getting playmakers from the SEC that, are, that were five-star guys that are, you know, top athletes that are coming in and – uh, that can that can kind of help out there, right? And then they're also getting guys that have played in this league before, you know, in the Oklahoma State transfer, J.P. Richardson. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff there, and they get most of their defense back. Like I said, I like them. I think it's a it, – on paper, it bodes well. But then again, I mean, you got to think Kansas State, like we said, I mean, they're getting – the quarterback that beat them is going to be back this year uh, in the big – you know, in the Big 12 championship game. Texas with Quinn Ewers – and, uh, you know, that loaded wide receiver room out there, yeah, that's going to be sure. a tough one. Texas Tech, we kind of talked about it. I mean, they're building something really good down there. Uh, Baylor, that's always a really tough one 
in that in those conference games. And you know, Oklahoma, I think they got Dylan Gabriel, and they got one of the best coordinators uh, as far as offense is concerned in the country, and Jeff Levy. To me, you know, and this is my last point on this here, Chris. Look, I, I think it's like every year. It's this is like every year in the Big Twelve, right? It's going to be a toss up. It's anyone's guess who's going to win it, you know, or who's going to be in the hunt, you know, late in the year. I think gut feeling, it's tough because they're having to replace a quarterback in, in, you know, Duggan. But like I said, I mean, the kid did, Duggan didn't win that job coming out of the fall camp last year. So I, I think that they absolutely can. If, if there's any, you know, if they, you put them in the Big Ten or you put them in, um, you know, the SEC, it'd be really, really tough for me to say that. But I think, yeah, they, they can absolutely right. win win this conference or at least compete for it, you know, to the to the very end there. No, I no, you're you're exactly right. It's just funny. I'm gonna throw this out here before we wrap this part of it up. Those last five teams there, K State, Texas Tech, Texas, Baylor, and Oklahoma, all five of those could win that conference. One of those five is gonna win that conference. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Like that's how hard it is for me to predict. I'm not a big 12 expert I used to be when Nebraska was down there, but like, that's my point. Like, look at those last five games from your TCU and just look at what they have returning. It's like, fuck, question mark here, question mark there. We got solid pieces here. We have solid pieces there. If this is the SEC, like you said, you, you hit the nail on the head. This is the SEC or the fucking Big Ten or maybe even the Pac-12. We kind of know who the top three teams are probably going to be. Yeah. Holy shit. This fucking conference, I have no idea, man. If TCU even finishes in the top three, that's great. You said nine and three, dude. I think that's a pretty goddamn good year, dude. I'll take a nine and three year over here as a Nebraska fan. I've won <laughs> nine games in two, two or three years total. So 